This movie is about vertical and horizontal lookups. Mainly vertical lookups, horizontal lookups are basically the same thing, just going in a different direction. So we're going to be in looking at the basic structure of vertical and horizontal lookups, and then we're going to look at that optional argument, the true false, to show you what you can do with that. And then we're going to talk about some problems with data that can degrade the effectiveness of the vertical and horizontal lookups. And then finally, we're going to look at the problems with vertical lookups and how to solve those problems, ultimately ending up with the suggestion that you don't use them. Instead, you use a combination of two other functions, the index and match function. So the vertical and horizontal lookup, the VLOOKUP, the HLOOKUP, they're basically pretty straightforward. There's four arguments to be defined for each one of these functions, but we're going to ignore the last argument since it's optional. The three required arguments, it turns out, are pretty logical that they're required. The first one being the lookup value. Well, if you're going to look something up, you've got to have something to look up. So once you define the value that you're looking up, you need to define where it is that you're going to look, which is the table array or the range of cells. And then the last argument is the column or the row index, the column for a vertical lookup, the row for horizontal lookup. And that tells Excel what piece of data within the range that you want to pull out once it finds a match for what you're looking up. So how does all this work? We're going to do a VLOOKUP down here in cell E32 equal VL and IntelliSense has narrowed the search down to one function, the one I want. Tabbing that into the cell, I'm going to reference product 3, the value that's in G12, as what I'm going to look up, comma, and the table arrays are bordered with a red border, and for the vertical lookup, that's the table array that I want to look into. And once Excel finds a match and finds product 3, I want it to return the value that's in the fifth column. Closing the parentheses, control enter, that value is 400. So what did Excel do? Excel looked for product 3, the value that we wanted to have it look up, in the first column in the range of cells or the table array, and it would have found product 3 right there. And then it went over five columns, the first column being the column it looked to find that data in in the first place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it returned the value 400. So the horizontal lookup works exactly the same way, only in a different direction. I'm going to select cell M32 equal HL, and the Telesense has again found only one function, and that's the one that we want. Tabbing that into the cell, we're going to again look for product 3 in the table array or the range of cells. It's framed out with a red border comma, and we're going to look for the row index number this time instead of the column index number. And like I said, we're going to ignore that optional argument for now. Closing the parentheses, control enter, and Excel returns the value of 400. It's the same data, just oriented differently. So it's the same function, just oriented differently. So instead of looking up the value, product 3 in the first column, Excel looks up product 3 in the first row, and once it finds it in the table array that we've defined, which is framed out with a red border, it's going to go down five rows, including the row that it found our value on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it returns a value of 400. So what is this optional argument, range underscore lookup for? This segment is about why you would define that optional argument to be true and when you would want to do that and what happens as a result of defining that argument to be true. Backing up a step, when you're looking up in a table array or a range of cells and you want to pull out a value that's related to another value, like we just did in the first segment of this movie, you usually want to find an exact match. But sometimes you don't like in the case of trying to find a tax rate that's applicable for a given income level. 
These are the 2013 tax rates for married couples filing jointly that I pulled off of the Internet. And this information is displayed such that anything less than $17,850 has a 10% tax rate over $17,850 and less than $72,500, the rate is 15%. And so on until you get over $450,000 where the rate is 39.6%. The VLOOKUP can return the appropriate tax rate for the given income level if you do two things. One, you sort the data in the way that we have it sorted in ascending order from smallest to largest. In the column, in this case for a VLOOKUP, that contains the value that you're looking up. And two, that last optional argument you define to be true. So how does this work? I'm going to put some income levels in here. 15,000, 100,000, and 400,000. And we're going to find the applicable tax rate for each of these income levels. Now, there's a caveat I want to throw in here, and that is that the tax rates are applicable for the income that's in between those bin amounts. So if the income is greater than 17,850 and less than 72,500, it is that portion of your taxable income that the 15% is applicable for. Setting that aside, because we can certainly accommodate that in formulas, but without getting too far adrift from the VLOOKUP function, which is our focus, we're going to ignore that for the time being. And the result that we're going to get is the equivalent of the tax rate being applicable for the entire amount of the income. So setting up our VLOOKUPs, beginning here and selecting all three cells, since I know I want to go into those three cells, equal VL tab, the lookup value is going to be found to the left of the cell that I'm building the function in. The table array is going to be this block of cells that I'm going to have to make an absolute reference since this function is going to be copied down to the two cells below it. Comma, I want to return the value in the second column and then the last value is the range lookup. What we want is true. I'm going to tab that into this cell, close the parentheses, control enter, and all three of those V lookups are copied down, changing the formatting so that it equals the data. And clicking off of that. For the first result, the income is less than 17,850, it's 15,000, so it falls into the first grouping. The second result, 100,000, is less than 146,400, but it's greater than 72,500. So the applicable tax rate, again ignoring that these are marginal tax rates, is 25%, and 400,000 is greater than $398,050, but it's smaller than 450,000, and the V lookup returns 35%. And the H lookup works exactly the same way tabbing that into the cell, I'm going to look up the income 15,000, comma, in this table array, and again, I'm going to have to anchor that with absolute references, comma, I want the second row returned, comma, and I want true or approximate match, which is sort of an, an unfortunate description considering what it really actually does. Close the parentheses, control enter, and reformatting those cells with the same values that the VLOOKUP returned. So this brings us to the last part, the last segment of the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP movie. If you're using VLOOKUPs and HLOOKUPs, or you're going to be using them, you're going to run into issues with your data inevitably. And I've got some data set up in column G, H, and N at the top part of this worksheet. It looks like the content in columns G and H are the same, but they're actually not. But the content in columns H and N are the same. And the best way to check to see whether the content is the same in two cells is to use a formula that begins with equals, reference one of the cells, and ask Excel if that's equal to the other cell. So control enter, and it is and column H again equals column N. But it looks like 
the content in columns G and H are also the same. But they're not. Because when I perform the same test, equals column G, equals column H, control enter, Excel returns false in both cases. By the way, this is the best way to check to see if your data is the same, as opposed to using the exact function. Because there's two problems with the exact function, which compares two cells and returns a false or true, depending upon whether the exact function determines that the content is the same. One problem is that it is case sensitive, and VLOOKUPs and HLOOKUPs are not case sensitive. The second problem is the exact function will lie to you. So I'm going to put an exact function in column J, and I'm going to compare the content in column G with the content in column H. And I get false return to me. That's correct. Copying that down to J14, the exact function tells me that the content in G and H are the same. Well, that's not true. Although each cell contains the alphanumeric characters 2 and 9, one is text and one is values. And that will cause you issues with your V and H lookups. So if you're trying to troubleshoot your data, don't use the exact function. Set up an equation and set one cell equal to the other, which in effect asks Excel whether those cells are equal. It's a logical structure, and Excel will answer true if they're equal and false if they're not. So I'm going to delete the exact function and set up a VLOOKUP, looking up the references in column G in the table array in N and O and have Excel give me the second value, which is a match. And then I'm going to make this an absolute reference for the table array. Close the parentheses, control enter. And I get the famous NA, or not available error message, in both cases, as we would expect. So what is the problem with the content that's in columns G and H? Because they look the same. Well, the value or the content that's in column G, pressing F2 and home, has a blank character space that I'm arrowing on both sides of at the beginning of the text string. I'm going to escape out of that, arrow over to column H, F2, home, and the cursor is right at the beginning of the text string. So I don't have that issue. I don't have a blank character space. So the content in these two cells are not the same. So how do I fix that? Well, if you saw one of the prior movies, you would know, you may know, that you can use the trim function to trim off blank character spaces on either side of a text string. It'll also trim off extra spaces in between words within a text string. Control Enter. And redirecting my VLOOKUP to the reference that's in column J rather than G, I get a match. The second pair of cells has a different issue. As I said earlier, one contains text, and it's this one. We can see the quote mark before the alphanumeric characters 2 and 9, which makes this a text rather than a value. And the contents in column H is a value. It's the number 29. So how do we fix that? Well, we can convert the text to a value by using the value function referencing the text, and then again redirecting my VLOOKUP to the content in column J, enter, I get a match. Okay, we're in the home stretch here. VLOOKUPs and HLOOKUPs are great. There's some problems with them though. The first is that unless you make your column reference dynamic, you're going to run into issues. And I'm going to build a VLOOKUP and show you what I mean. I'm going to look for the letter A in this table array, and of course we'll find it. And I'm going to go to column 3, enter. And of course I get the value 200, just what we would expect. That's the third column. But what happens if somebody comes by and inserts a column 
in between the first column and the column that you're referencing in the VLOOKUP. Since we hard-coded that column reference, the VLOOKUP is still looking in the third column, which contains at this point no content. So how do we fix that? How do we make that reference dynamic? There's probably a couple ways to do it, but this is one way to do it. There's a function called the column function that will return the column number for the reference. So if I put the column function in this cell and reference N22, I get column 14. And what does that mean? It means the column function is returning the fact that it is referencing a cell that's in the 14th column on the worksheet, which in this case is column N. I'm going to copy that two cells over. And column P then, of course, is the 16th column. So what does that do for me? It allows me to then build a dynamic reference in my VLOOKUP. Because to get column 3, I need to take 16 minus 14, which will obviously give me 2. But what I want, since the first column is included in the count, is 3. And in order to get that, I'm going to add 1. Enter. So now when I insert a column, that number is now 4. So knowing that, and I'm going to delete column P, we can go back into our VLOOKUP and replace our hard-coded column reference with a dynamic reference, first inputting a column reference to the column that we want to pull out from the table array, close parentheses, minus a column reference to the column that we're going to be looking into in the table array, close parentheses, plus 1, because we want to include that first column, enter, we get a return value of 200. But when we insert a column, our VLOOKUP still returns the correct value. We can insert a couple of columns. And the VLOOKUP still returns 200 because it's going to be looking in column 6 in this table array, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that fixes that issue. I'm going to delete those inserted columns, delete this content up there. So the next issue with the VLOOKUP is the range. And we're going to go back to that optional function one more time. We ignored it in the first segment. The second segment, we set it to true which is actually the default setting for that argument. So if you don't set that argument, that fourth optional argument to false, when you're looking up a value that you want an exact match for, for instance, let's say I want to look up D, control enter, I still get a value because the default position for the VLOOKUP is to look up and find a close match or the equivalent of that optional argument being set to true because currently the letter D doesn't exist in the table array and yet the VLOOKUP is returning a value. So if you want to find an exact match, that last optional argument needs to be false and now the VLOOKUP returns the famous not available or NA because there is no match for the letter D. Well let's add the letter D below the table array and I'll use the same numbers just for consistency purposes and clicking off of that and of course the VLOOKUP continues to return the not available because it's still looking in the hard-coded table array that we defined when we set up the lookup. So how do we fix that issue? There, again, are several ways to do this, but probably the easiest way to do it is to select the range that contains the data, press Control T, and convert that range to a table. I'm going to left click OK, and Excel tells me the formulas in the header row will be removed and converted to static text. That's fine because I had those numbers actually calculated, numbering the column references. It's fine that I'm going to convert those to text. I'm going to say yes.
and I'm going to redefine the table array to be a reference to that range and Excel will automatically convert that reference to the range to the reference to the table and because D is now there I now get a value from my VLOOKUP but the point of doing this is that when you add data, append data to the bottom of the table enter the VLOOKUP will dynamically include all of that data because it's referencing the table in the table array control enter and I still get 200 so that in effect addresses the problem of the fixed reference to the table array by converting the range to a table it will actually dynamically grow as you append data to the bottom of the table okay but there's another problem with VLOOKUPs in fact there's two more problems one is that if I have data to the left of the column that I'm looking in to find a match for my lookup value I can't have the VLOOKUP instead of looking to the right look to the left by putting a negative number in there because I'll get an error message and you might think well that's because the table doesn't include column M as part of its contents but that won't solve it either because if I included column M as part of the contents column M would be the place that the lookup would be looking to to find the match for the lookup value so we have that issue and the other issue is and this doesn't become a problem unless you have thousands and thousands of VLOOKUPs VLOOKUPs consume processing capacity and if you have only a few hundred it really doesn't matter but if you have 50,000 it might so how do we fix those two issues so I'm going to delete our VLOOKUP and in its place I'm going to use two other functions an index function and a match function and without going into the details about the particulars of those functions I'm going to assume that you can watch the movies on those functions what I'm going to do is deploy those functions to replace the VLOOKUP to solve the issues that we just talked about so the index function I'm going to build this index function so that we can look to the left of column N which was our VLOOKUP reference and pull out the values that are in column M which is the column to the left so since I want the value in column M that's the array that I'm going to reference in the index function and I'm going to reference the entire column that way it's impossible to have data on the worksheet that won't be recognized by the function the row number I'm going to use the match function which is going to have me look up a value and I'm going to have it look up the value of E and the lookup array is going to be the column that we've been looking into to find a match for our lookup values all along and the match type I want is an exact match I'm going to arrow down and tab close parentheses comma so I can define the last argument for the index which I want the first column which is going to give me the value in column M so what we have here is the index function is going to look in column M and go the number of rows down determined by the match function so when it finds a match for E which is going to be in row 28 the match function will return 28 which will be the row reference for the index function which is looking in column M that will then go to row 28 and return the value that's in column 1 which is column M so this should return a value of 500 closing the parentheses control enter and there it is so this actually solves all of the problems at the same time I can insert columns and my index match is returning the correct value I can add additional records and my index function will return the correct value and of course I can look to the left or right to the column I'm looking up the value in and it's impossible to add values on the worksheet that won't be included in the columns that the index match is looking to because you've referenced the entire column and the index match combination is a lot less taxing on the processing capabilities of your computer.
So that's the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions. We began by looking at the structure of the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP, defining the first three arguments and ignoring the optional argument for the time being. And then we looked up what the functionality of the optional argument was if we define that to be true, where we can have the VLOOKUP find an approximate match that allows us to do things like look for tax rates that are established for ranges of values, which in this case was taxable income. It could be quantity discounts. It could be bonus levels. It could be all kinds of things. So the optional argument has to be true, and the data has to be sorted in ascending order. And lastly, we looked at some issues surrounding the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions, beginning with the data where you can have problems because you have blank character spaces or because you have content that in some cells is text and others is values. And we found some solutions to the problems that hard coding the column reference and the table array can cause. And finally, we solved all of the problems that directly have to do with the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP by not using those functions at all and instead using an index and a match function.